greetings. I'm your science teacher, Ms. Tabia. Today, we will be learning about plant reproduction. In this lesson, I will be teaching you about structure of seed, seed germination, dispersal of seeds, and vegetative reproduction. So let us begin. Plants are very important to us. We cannot survive without plants. They provide us with food, oxygen, medicines, spices, fiber, wood, etc. We can't live without them. Imagine if one day plants cease to exist. Plants that are living today will be the only plants existing on our planet. What will happen? These plants will grow old and die. And no new plants are formed. That means no food, no oxygen, no life. What do we infer from this? We infer that continuity of plant life is important for the continuity of our life or continuity of our life depends on the continuity of plant life. Right? But how do plants continue their life? They continue their life with the help of reproduction. Reproduction is the process by which living organisms produce their own kind. And plant reproduction is the process by which plants will produce their own kind. Now, on the basis of reproduction, plants are of two types, flowering plants, non-flowering plants. Talking about flowering plants, as the name suggests, flowering plants are those plants that bear flowers. Flowers which are beautiful, colorful, they smell so good. We grow flowers in our garden to make it look beautiful. But what is the function of flower? It is the reproductive part of the plant. Plants bear flowers that helps them to reproduce. These flowers develop into fruits. A fruit has one or many seeds, right? These seeds develop into new plants. Now, in order to understand the reproduction in plants through seeds, we must know about the structure of seed. Looking at the picture, a seed has three parts. Seed coat, embryo, cotyledon. Now, at first we will talk about seed coat. If you will take a kidney bean seed and soak it overnight, in the morning you will be able to peel off a thin car. This car or this layer is the seed coat. The function of seed coat is to protect and cover the inner parts of the seed, right? So it's for the protection seed coat. Talking about embryo, embryo is a small part inside the seed. This embryo is the actual part that develops into new plant. Now this embryo further has two parts, radical and plumule. Radical develops into the root of this new plant and plumule grows towards the light and forms the shoot of the new plant, right? Then coming to cotyledon, cotyledon stores food for this seed so that it can grow into the baby plant. So cotyledon provides food for the growing plant. It's very important. The children, few seeds have only one cotyledon, but some have two cotyledons. On the basis of number of cotyledons, seeds are of two types monocotyledonous seeds and dicotyledonous seeds. Mono meaning one. It means a seed that has only one cotyledon is known as monocotyledonous seed. And such plants will be called as monocots. But the seed that has two cotyledons, they are known as dicotyledon seeds. And such plants are known as dicots. Citing some examples, monocotyledon seeds or monocots, rice, maize, all types of grasses. Dicots, beans, mango, apple, etc. So that was structure of 
seed. I'll repeat it. A seed has three parts. Seed coat for protection, embryo, that has two parts, radical, which develops into roots, plumule, which develop into shoot, and cotyledon, which provides food for this seed, which is developing into a baby plant. Now let us move forward to seed germination. What is seed germination? Basically, it is the process by which the seed will develop into a baby plant. The seed germinates to become a baby plant. The process by which seeds develop into new plants is known as germination. Remember, ripe fruits produce fully developed seeds. If fruits are raw, seeds might not be fully developed. They will not germinate. For germination of seeds, there are certain conditions which are necessary. Number one, air. A seed needs air to germinate. Warmth. There must be some heat for these seeds to germinate properly. Water. Seeds need moisture to germinate. Now, what are the various states of germination? How this happens? The children, when we take a fully developed dry seed and provide it with necessary conditions, that is air, warmth and moisture, it will start to develop. Initially, seeds absorb moisture and the seed coat will split. The embryo will start developing. First, radical comes out and develops into the root of the plant. Then, plumule will develop into the shoot of this baby plant. Over the period of time, the roots will be formed fully, the shoot will be formed and leaves will also start to grow. But before that, when leaves are not formed, cotyledon provides food for this developing baby plant. This cotyledon turns green to make food, but once leaves are formed, they can show photosynthesis and prepare food for the plant. Here, one more thing that I would like to mention is germinated seeds are known as sprouts and these sprouts are good for our health. Moving on, children, let us talk about seed dispersal. What is seed dispersal? When seeds are dispersed or spread away from the parent plant, it is known as seed dispersal. But why? What is the need of seed dispersal? Why do we need it? Seed dispersal is very important. Take an example of a parent plant, a huge tree. It has many flowers. The flowers will develop into fruits. Fruits will ripen, seeds will be fully developed and after some time the seeds will fall down on the ground and they will start to germinate. But all the seeds are accumulated at the bottom of this tree. They might not get enough warmth because they are under the shade of this parent plant. There are so many seeds, so all of them might not get enough moisture and less space. So they won't be able to spread their roots or develop proper shoots. That makes seed dispersal very important. So for the reproduction of plants, when fruits develop, ripen, seeds are fully developed, seed dispersal is important so the seeds are spread away from the parent plant they get enough space warm moisture air and germinate to form new plants the children there are many ways by which seed dispersal takes place number one dispersal by wind Wind plays an important role for seed dispersal. There are many plants 
which have light or winged seeds when there is wind it takes these seeds away with it and spread these seeds away from the parent plant example of such plants are dandelion sycamore and cotton another method by which seeds are dispersed is dispersal by water aquatic plants like lotus or the plants that grow near water bodies like coconut have light and spongy seeds such seeds float on the water and the water currents take them away from parent plant where they can germinate grow and develop into new plants then comes seed dispersal by animals birds animals even humans play an important role in the seed dispersal certain plants which have hooked or seeds with spines such seeds get attached with the bodies of birds and animals right and when these birds fly away or animals move around these seeds fall down from their bodies right and they germinate like xanthium another method of seed dispersal is dispersal by explosion now what happens when fruit develops fully it explodes and the seeds are thrown away okay they move away from the parent plant for example peas balsam lady's finger they these are the certain ways by which seeds are dispersed and once they are dispersed they get enough space warmth and water so the chances of germination increase moving on to next topic vegetative reproduction we learned about germination we learn about developing new plants with the help of seeds now let us talk about another method in which seeds are not required for growing plants well that sounds exciting you can take a part of plant and develop it into the new plant such method is known as vegetative reproduction or vegetative propagation it is beneficial to us you know why because sometimes plants do not develop easily from seeds sometimes it takes too long for plants to develop into new plants starting from the seeds and sometimes seeds are not viable so what can we do we can simply take the part of the plant and grow it into the new plant right so there are three ways by which new plants can be formed from the part of a parent plant number 1 is plants from stems then plants from roots then plants from leaves plants from roots children if we will take a part of root from the parent plant we can sow it into the soil and it will be developed into the new plant for example bread fruit and sweet potato plants from leaves some fully developed leaves in some plants fully developed leaves can also give rise to new plants for example begonia bryophyllum and sweet potato here we must remember that sweet potato can be developed either from its root or from its leaves plants from stems some plants can be grown from the stem cuttings like banana turmeric tea lilies potatoes modified stems are generally used for this purpose bulbs of lily plant which is a modified stem can be used to grow new lily plants similarly potato which is again a modified stem eyes or buds on potatoes can be used to grow new potato plants 
Some other plants that develop from their underground stem are turmeric and ginger. That's all for today. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Thank you.